has an N95 mask, but just the... Well, yeah, but mine aren't really ending. Yeah, but they have lots of things in the way that you don't have your head. It's just less comfortable to wear on that one. They're okay. I don't know. I have to look. Oh, okay. Do you think they think. can they can't hear us, can they? Yes, because you have the you should mute us. Test one two, test one two.
No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. But unfortunately, this week, we couldn't welcome you into the sanctuary. I thought about going outside, but it said it was supposed to rain. But right now, here in Grand Bray, it's a nice 55 degrees maybe outside, a little bit of sun, a little bit of wind. Oh, if we could only predict the future, if we only could control the virus, if we could only, only, only. And I'm thankful for the technology that we have that even if we can't be physically together, we can be together in spirit, we can be together over Zoom, we can be together in the many ways that God allows. So let us come into worship. Let us come into time of prayer and praise. This Sunday we are doing a pastor of the pastor, so there's no sermon prepared. There is only questions that I hope you have during that time. If you want to type them into the in if you want to type them in to the chat room, we can see them there. Please don't email them to me right now, because I'm not going to check my email, or you can unmute yourself and ask a question during that time. So be thinking of some questions that maybe a previous sermon or world events have our class has going to let us gather for our prelude.
Please join with me in the words to enter worship. Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as they sowed, some feet fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, since it had no depth, and when the sun arose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into the good soil, and brought forth grain, growing up and yielding thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. So we come into the time of words of the ment. We had our last youth group on Wednesday night for the season. And we talked about the school shootings, of course, and we talked about prayer. And I told them, I said, well, I'm going to say an unpastoral thing here. I said, sometimes swear words are very appropriate. And for what has happened for that community in Texas, seems that they are the only words that can really suffice. We will not say them here during worship, but it is such a tragedy. It is such a mess. It is such. Please join with me in the words of lament. Compassionate God, more children have died this week. My minorities have been terrorized this month. Genocide is being carried out across the ocean. Violence is acted out with a gun, continues to rip through our society and world. Tear down this idol of security and power in our nation and all nations. Our thoughts are confounded. We are running out of prayers. We have shed too many tears. Rise up, O God of justice. Create in our hearts and the world the real kingdom the one where the lion lays down with the lamb, the one where there is no war, no more, no more tears of so or sorrow. Move in our lives that... Uh, the Aretha Franklin biography picture. And as they were going through tough times, as the, uh, through the civil rights, and they showed Aretha's dad, father, who was a preacher, and he said, yes, these things are against us, but who is greater than God? And so even though they were going through the tough times, even though we are going through tough times, who is greater than God? No one. So things can resolve, things can repair, things can get better. Let us believe that and proclaim that in our words of blessing. The Lord is a leader, that the earth rejoice, that the many coastlands be glad. The heavens proclaim the Lord's righteousness, and all peoples behold glory. All worshipers of images are put to shame, those who make their boast in worthless idols. For you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. The God guards the lives of the faithful. All light dawns for the righteous for the joy of the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. Invite Anne Ross to unmute and read our prayer, our poem of peace. It is a custom in our congregation to light our peace candle during worship as a witness to the Prince of Peace and our communal intention to be peacemakers as a just peace church. This is a poem by Rosario Murillo. 
I'm going to plant a heart in the earth. Water it with love from a vein. I'm going to praise it with the push of muscle and care for it in the sound of all dimensions. I'm going to leave a heart in the earth so it may grow and flower. A heart that throbs with longing, that adores everything green, that will be strength and nourishment for birds, that will be the sap of plants and mountains. Please pass the peace to one another. Peace be with you all. Mike Kathy Ann, I believe, to unmute and read our first scripture. One day as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a female slave who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money. Uh, I can't see the whole script, so I'm going to pull up my own version here. Sorry about that. Starting over. One day as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a female slave who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when our owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men, these Jews are disturbing our city and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us being Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they, had given up a, after they had given a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them into the innermost cell and fastened their feet, feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought, him, he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he 
and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. This will be Nancy and Nancy. The second scripture reading is taken from John 17, 20 to 26. I'll go first, okay, Nancy? Sure. I'm not praying only for them, but also for those who believe in me because of their word. I pray they will be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. I pray that they also will be in us so that the world will believe that you sent me. I've given them the glory that you gave me so that they can be one just as we are one. I'm in them and you are in me so that they will be made perfectly one. Then the world will know that you sent me and that you have loved them just as you loved me. There, Nance. Father, I want those I want those you gave me to be with me where I am. Then I can see my glory, which you gave me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous even the world didn't know you. But I have known you, and these believers know you, know that you sent me. I've made your name known to them and will continue to make it known so that your love for me will be in them and I myself will be in them. Blessed be the reading and the hearing of the story of God and the gathering of God's people. I invite our youth to pay attention, to join as they are able. There's a phrase in today's scripture in the gospel that Jesus prays, Father, that they may all be one as we are one. That they may all be one. That is the motto of our denomination. Our denomination is, is the wider church of the churches that we are in, uh, partnered with across the United States. Our United Church of Christ has about 5,000 churches all across the United States. A lot of them are up in the Northeast and the New England area, but every state has at least one. We have about 130 churches here in Minnesota that we are a part of. And we came together back in 1957, and we and lots of prayer and lots of study and lots of negotiation. Four different other denominations came together to create this United Church of Christ. And we came from different backgrounds and they said, well, what is gonna be the one thing that's gonna hold us together? Is it gonna be the Bible? Is it gonna be this doctrine? What is it gonna be? And they said, we are gonna have a prayer. That's what's gonna hold us together. We're not gonna agree on everything. We're not gonna interpret the Bible in the same way. We're not gonna look at and say this group can tell that group what to do. We're just going to come together and we're going to see if we can be held together with prayer that they may all be one. And we hope that others, as time goes on, will come and join us. They did have some grand vision that the uh, Catholics and the Lutherans and the Methodists and the Baptists would eventually join us and probably not going to happen. But we are open to partnering. We are open to holding each other in prayer. We are open to working together in the things that God wants us to work on. That they may all be one. 
It doesn't mean we'll all have the same voice or all have the same thoughts or all have the same families or all have the same skin color or the languages, but that we are held together by prayer, by covenant, by an agreement that we're going to try this and we're going to promise to love each other and seek what Jesus and God wants us to do. So that's pretty cool. I think that's why I, I was born in this, but that's why I stayed part of this church. But it also is kind of scary that we can, because some people do have different ideas, and so where there is no right or wrong answer all the time. And our opinions on how to look at Scripture and how to respond to what's happening in the world can be different. But it's a journey, and it's a prayer, and it's a hope. And we hope that you continue as long as you are able to be with us. Thank you. Amen. Okay, so we start with Pester the Pastor. So if you have a question about one of my previous sermons or a counter-argument or about what's happening in the world or something that was brought up in one of our discipleship groups or classes or something I wrote online, or as... Steve over there said, we'll just have a Quaker service of 15 minutes of silence and just listen to the Spirit instead. So, You, you can't unmute them. They have to unmute themselves. Yeah, you have to unmute yourself if you have a question. Sorry. What we have is so good, why aren't we organized? Well, it's because we do not have a top-down organization. In the United Church of Christ, the General Synod, which meets every once every two years as a national body, uh, can say this is what we should focus on, and each conference, which is the next level, uh, usually covering the state, can say this is what we should be focusing on, and then we go down to the associations, and associations say, can say, nope, we don't want to do that, we don't want to do that, we can do this, and then we get to our local church here, and which has been described as herding cats. So we have lots of different ideas within our local church about what we should be focused on, on and what we should be doing. So, yeah, it's it's the yin and the yang. The yin is everybody can make up their mind. The yang is that we don't have a single focus that every member has to be a part of. Uh, Steve said it was more focused on our local church on not being organized to spread the word. And yeah, um, uh, we are not one of the top five, ten 
denominations population wise and and about 20 years ago we had the god is still speaking campaigns which did help us a little bit of uh, making us known but um but being a people that says that you are welcome here no matter who you are um it does limit and it does does limits on how we can invite people, but it also is not the main driver of our church. Other churches are, well, we have to be a mega church to be successful. We have to save souls so they don't go to hell. Our church is, hey, if you want to show up, <laughs> we would love to have you. And yes, we do need to be a little more organized and a little have a little better message to, to share with people that you can either invite your neighbor or your friend or have something in the local paper or something like that. Yeah, we do need to be a little more organized on that to say, hey, we're here and this is who we are and we would love to have you join us. Was there congregational churches that didn't join the merger? And the answer is yes. Um, when the mergers went through, uh, it was the main four. There was other ones, two other smaller ones, but there was the congregational and then the Christian, which was um, mainly a local church at, uh, from the Ohio Valley through North Carolina, Appalachia. Um, and then we have Lutherans that came out of Missouri, not the Missouri Synod of Lutherans, but the Evangelical Lutherans that joined us, and then the German Reform. And the Evangelicals were mainly in the Missouri area up through the plains, and the German Reformed were sent, are centered in uh, Pennsylvania. And so German reformed and evangelicals are top down, so they voted at their national synods, at their national gatherings, we're going to join, and every church was swept in it. The congregationals and the Christians each had the opportunity as local churches and as associations and as conferences to say, yes, we're going to join this, or no, we are not. So there is like schedule B churches of congregational churches that I know one's in Detroit Lakes, and one was down in the Twin Cities. I can't remember if it was called Plymouth. Edina Colonial didn't join them. Edina didn't, but there is one right downtown that took that takes up a whole city block. It is Plymouth. And they finally, I think they finally joined the UCC a couple of years ago that they're now part of our wider church. So so yeah, each and then after the Germans and the Lutherans joined, then those local churches had the opportunity to leave in, and over time, many of them have. So when we first started uh, in 1957, we had about two million members. Now we're down to just under a million members. But all all denominations have seen a decrease over the years in membership, no matter what their affiliation or theology. I have a comment. When, when I lived in Duluth when, in 1957, and I remember the discussion at church that Pilgrim went to Pilgrim Congregational, and uh, there was a group of people who didn't want to join, and so they built their own church, which is farther east in Duluth, near the golf club. Um, those are the people that didn't want to be part of the UCC. So in a way, it shows our, our willingness to let people have their own opinions because just fine, these people didn't want to do it. They went and did their own thing. That was fine. Thanks for that, Rana.
Other questions, other thoughts? They did, and hear that Steve Aldrich uh, said, for what it's worth his opinion as a newcomer, that those who come to this church really seem to enjoy coming to this church. As my wife would say, we're not a bunch of grumpy bears. Kathy Ann here. Um, do you think that the construct of what church is is kind of dying? That's why we have less people, like younger generations in the church. Like the church as it is, is dying. Yes. The church as an organization, the church as a structure, the church as a vehicle is dying. Does that mean that people, young, especially young people, aren't as spiritual or religious? Uh, no, absolutely not. Um, when a study did in the 1950s where almost everybody went to church, they showed that asked if they had, a, the pew asked if they had a spiritual experience of however they want to call it, feeling the presence of God, seeing angels or something like that, hearing their prayers answered. And only about 20% of people back then said, yes, I, I've, I had a spiritual experience, a mystical experience. Back in the, around 2000, that has gone up to 50%. So in some ways, people are more open to spirituality. Um, yeah, but the vehicles of church or denominations, church organizations, local, national, are, are dying. And that's not a bad thing, I don't think, in the way that just as at the end of the season, when your tomato plants die and your corn stalks die, you know, you're like, you're not freaking out saying, oh my gosh, we're never gonna have corn and tomatoes again. You know that in the spring, you'll be able to plant something and something else will glow, bloom and grow. And that's probably what's gonna happen with the church of that. There will be some church organizations and buildings that will hang on. And there are lots of them that are thriving right now locally in different settings and different denominations and some of them are going online and some of them are meeting in coffee houses and some of them meeting outside and so it's so i do not doubt that god's the holy spirit that god that jesus is going to be a part of this world into the future um but i don't think i'm turning 53 next now on Saturday, I don't think that I will see fully what the new fruit is gonna be, the new plants, the new buildings are gonna look like in my lifetime, we're, we're gonna go down, but we may be near the bottom. There were, there's some evidence to show that we may, ha may be near the bottom of things, and then they're gonna start building and growing again. And how that looks, <laughs> I have no idea. If that's allowed, <laughs> can we sing happy birthday to Anna? Any other questions or comments? From where you sit or stand, Anno, uh, where do you see our local congregation going? Obviously, we are 
pretty small in numbers. And for the most part, folks of advanced years, um, how can we be a presence in this community? Oh, uh, small but mighty. I, I think we have um, some seeds that are here. I, I, I believe that this church has gone through ups and downs and is on the upswing. It did this church a couple of years ago, a few years ago, almost did die. And now it's being resurrected. Now it's being rebuilt. Um, and I'm hoping our conversations over the next six months that we started last week will help give us a little bit of a guide, a little bit of a roadmap about who we want to be as a church and what do we want to do. Um, and being the tradition of this church is that not everybody's going to buy into it and we're going to have lots of small groups yet that are going to, some of them are working on the building, some of them are going to work on food security, some of them are going to be working on uh, global climate change, some of them are probably going to be work, you know, um, on other things. But yes, we are an aging congregation. Uh, but when I when I was in Walker, they said, Oh, we need children and young families. Otherwise, this church is going to die. And I said, Well, we get, we have a lot of newly retired folks in this, in that church, and we are getting newly retired folks in this church. And we are, and those newly retired folks still have a lot of energy, still have a lot of resources, still have a lot of life left to live. So, we hope that they will be here and the members of our church for 15, 20 years. If you, if you retire between the age of 60, 65, you probably have 15 fruitful years left with our congregation, if not longer than that. You know, so. Hopefully more than 15 from 60. Yes. Well, yeah, most, most, hopefully. And, um, and we do have a number of people over 75 in our congregation who are very active yet. So, you know, so that's, that's on the low end, you know. So, so I am very optimistic. I'm very hopeful. I have reasons for hope. And, and I have faith that this church over the next couple of years will expand and grow. And if not in numbers, but at least in our faith and in our hearts and in our impact in the con in the world and in our community uh, with um with what happened with uh the earth day fair you know we had good help from our church being a part of that our we're coming up uh this saturday for the for the gay pride festival and we have church members that are involved with that and they will be seen and we will be serving food and we'll have our aprons on that says be the church and so so they will know that our church is putting their i can't even remember that expression putting their where their mouth money where their mouth is <laughs> wow that, so so yeah it's it's i i firmly believe this church has a future firmly believe we're going to grow in ways we haven't even thought of yet um will we outgrow our sanctuary and our building probably not but this church has a long history of helping to grow things and helping to start things in this community. And, and I think that is going to continue with the conversations we have and the actions we are taking and seeds we are planting. Going once. Uh, can you say a little bit more about the gay pride uh, activities 
I wasn't aware of a program that we were involved in. So, um, <laughs> Uh, it will come out into the newsletter on Tuesday. Um, there was an article in the newspaper this week about it, I think, or it'll be on, come out. But yeah, so instead of just uh, one part, um, just gathering down on a Saturday, doing a quick parade and then done, uh, at 11 o'clock, for those who want to be part of uh, a dance mob, you can show up to the Y at 11 o'clock. And they'll have the uh, they'll help you learn the dance for the dance mob at at noon to two. There is at the art colony. There is going to be an opportunity for you to make um, your name tags with your pronouns on it and other signage and other little art projects. At three o'clock, there is going to be um, there is going to be a speaker not at the library because uh, the library is still being fixed, but I think at the Clark County House, uh, Cor uh, Cook County Higher Ed, and it's going to be, Ma uh, I can't remember his last name, Matthew from Outfront, who's going to talk about how to be an ally to our to those in the LGBTQIA plus community. And then at five o'clock, we're going to start the festival down at Harbor Park. We're going to have some speakers, some dancers, some music. About 545, we're having the parade, and it's going to go up First Avenue to 61, down 61, and around through Java Moose and back to the park. And then after that, we're, not, we're going to continue that we are going to have some food there for people to eat, and there's going to be a DJ there for people to dance. And then on Sunday morning, that speaker from out front the lines is going to be here in our church. Uh, he's going to give us a sermon, probably talk a little bit more about how to be an ally. Um, and then there are several other activities that uh, the community theater is was planning uh, to do a, a play, but that they didn't get enough actors so we're probably in the, uh, the next weekend going to have a movie up there um, that is going to address these issues and then a uh, conversation afterwards and then at the end of the month um, I'm helping to organize it with Ben Nichols who teaches piano and uh, is our musician we're going to have at the library or help sponsored by the library a uh, Drag Queen Story Hour. And so we're lining up uh, a, pre a person to lead that. And so there are several things that are going to be happening. And then also the Cook County Higher Ed is also having uh, educational events sometime the week after in two weeks. So, um, and we hope to have all that information up on the social media. It's going to be in our, our newsletter and in other places around, so. And I'll just say um, for the food, the co-op is providing the food in the park, but our church will be helping to serve it and do some setup or something. So I think we probably could still need, you know, volunteers for that because the food group is only a few people in the church. Thanks for that addition. That is correct. Uh, Barb and John Botdor had a question on the chat and, and uh, I'm interested in that. What do you see as our main attraction as a church? What do I see as the main attraction of our church? I think we have several good strengths. Um, I think our worship is one of them. I think our our um, commitment to social justice, to be a just peace church, that's not just a, a plaque that we hang on the wall, but we have people individually and collectively that have been involved in a variety of social justice issues over the past few years and, uh, and over the past couple decades. Um, but I think our, our greatest strength is our openness. 
is that no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Um, and so it allows for that diversity of thought. It allows for, at times, iron to sharpen iron as we as we try to figure out exactly where we stand and what we can do and and what we want to do. Um, uh, and it, it's that openness also to the, uh, the uh, that was reflected in our building that there's just rarely a day that there's not some community group that uses our building and I would say the reverse is true that there's probably not a committee in this county that meets that doesn't have at least one of our members on it you know so we're not we're not in focused we're not all huddled in together saying okay we can do this and this is ours no we are a group that's everybody's looking off in a different direction and seeing where god is leading them and we and we go out from this place into the community so that that is that is an amazing thing that happens um that I have really not experienced in my other churches. We they have their two few little pet projects, and they're very satisfied with that. But those within our church, we're always looking for what is next. What can we do? What is what is our response to what is happening in the world, and what what can we do proactively to make the world a better place? Chandler, give us some reflection.
So Barb made sure that she imitated me by drinking the water when she came up here a couple weeks ago when she filled in. So this is for you, Barb. So we come into a time of prayer, ask for joys to be shared. If you'd like to unmute yourself and show us the goodness of God. I have a joy. Um, one of my brothers uh, just uh, underwent successful heart surgery last week. And that's going to have a huge difference in his life. And so we're very, very thankful that he was able to get through the surgery successfully. That is a joy. I have another joy. Uh, the joy is just having Chandler here uh, playing in, in the church service. It's just wonderful, very, very inspiring. Heavenly music. Heavenly music. Thank you. I got to put seeds in the ground. <laughs> I'm listening, my windows are open. I'm listening to chorus frogs at the moment and truly appreciating every bird that I see in all its spring glory. Those warblers are lovely. Seeing flowers around town and uh, seeing flowers at the at different hardware stores and that kind of thing. Uh, spring is here, spring is coming. I'll second that, Gwen. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. Uh, Thanksgiving for successful uh, return to health of my son and his family. They had a bout of COVID and some other issues and everything is pretty much back to normal. So that's good. Concerns to be brought up? Just everyone whose hearts are filled with sorrow. And we're not done with the virus yet. Just a, you know, a prayer of concern for our country with all of these mass shootings and uh, I don't know when it's gonna end. <coughs> and I, I think uh, we all have to get a hold of our legislators or whatever we can do to uh, try to stop this gun violence. Enough prayers for people struggling with mental health can't see the light in the world sometimes. Ukraine has disappeared from the news almost, but the war continues even worse. Mighty and merciful God, we thank you for the joys that continue, for the new life and the flowers and the birds and the greening of the lawns and trees, the beauty of the falls, that we are not any longer in a drought in our 
County. And we lift up those things that overwhelm us, war and school shootings, the continued pandemic. Lift up those on our prayer list, Meredith, Vicki, Paulette, Larry, Chris, Mike, John, Glenn Dornfeld, people of Ukraine and Russia, those who have COVID right now, and our shut-ins, Nona, Lou, and Bev, and those who have sorrow, and family of Bev, as they are not, I apologize, family of Eleanor Schoberg, as they finally able to gather to lay her ashes to rest. Help us to continue to listen, O oh God. To you above all, that's you love with your whole being, with the whole universe. That as we may be overwhelmed with what happens in this world, that it is not the final, it is not the end. It will not overtake us or you that we can struggle, that we can move, we can pray, and we can act to build something that is better, to have a community, a nation, a world that can be kinder. More just. And that it doesn't fall upon this church's shoulders. It does not fall upon our individual shoulders. But we can do our part. We can bend the arc and move the needle. And we can continue to join with others across our nation and around the world to have that better future for us all. Hear us as we pray the prayer is taught by yours. Child, our Father, Mother God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive our and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we come into a time of offering. You can uh, look and see on our bulletin what our annual income is and what it should be. And it looks like we're still doing pretty good there. Part of the United Church of Christ, we have four major offerings throughout the year. Uh, we had our neighbors in need in March. Next week, we'll be taking the strength in the church, and our neighbors in need and our one great hour sharing is kind of our mission offerings to help people outside our church, but also local churches that are dealing with different things, are doing different missions and ministries. But strength in the church is solely for our our church and make mainly our national church to help develop the programs and to help to get the word out and to help to continue the ministry in many ways and to help us to adapt what is of what whatever is coming forward when i was in seminary in 1997 and doing my polity 
course. It said in 1957, the annual budget for the United Church of Christ was $12 million in 1957. It was $12 million. In 1996, which was nine, yeah, 40 years later, the annual budget for the United Church of Christ remained at $12 million. So they held on. I believe now that the annual budget some 25 years later has now shrunk to $7 million to put on all of our programs and to help us connect. And so some of that strength in the church money goes to some of those programs and some of those things that help us that our national church and national budget as it shrinks cannot do. So ask to give generously and we'll take that next week. To honor our gifts, to honor our givers, we have our doxology. Jenny to share our news of God at work, if she would. Hi, everyone. It's been a while since I've been able to join in worship, so it's good to see people. Um, it looks this week that we are, uh, that Harbor Watch is back on Fridays. And I see that we are going to do the sing-along music jam on Wednesday outside. So I'm excited about that. Didn't know that was going to happen. Um, Zen Group is still meeting on Tuesday. Tai Chi is still meeting. This is all I'm assuming uh, dependent on transmission rate. Uh, next Sunday's Big Sunday's Pentecost, and we'll have a guest speaker as we were talking about the Pride March and event other events uh, downtown. Um, anybody else have announcements? Yes, Anne, Gwen, take turns. <laughs> uh, okay, thanks. Let's see, this kind of goes along with giving and news. Um, I get information from a very active group in Duluth that uh, helps asylum seekers. And there's an opportunity to help a specific person. Uh, several of their members um, are sponsoring people, having people live with them. And uh, one person in particular, and I can't remember his name, I don't have the information in front of me, but um, they could use some help to pay his uh, um, lawyer fees. Do you think he has a good chance of, of um, moving forward, but they could use some help with that. So I will forward the address where you could send a check um, to NO in the office to get that in the MailChimp. And I would encourage you to throw in a few dollars their, their way. Gwen? Okay. I, I... I, I didn't hear that, Steve. I'm sorry. Steve asked if uh, the question of what we're doing next Sunday is still up in the air. Um, up in the air, this this got changed because the county went to red transmission where uh, the, the public health assumes that if we have an indoor meeting, you are more than 50% uh, likely to catch COVID. Um, that didn't feel like a safe situation. If we go back to yellow next week, we, we can be inside. If we're not, I, we maybe be outside, but we can't do this. We can't, we can't, we shouldn't be inside in our sanctuary with no ventilation. Yeah, we, we will probably delay our MailChimp next week. Um, so it'll probably come out Friday. I'll delay our MailChimp so that that has the information of what we'll be doing next Sunday, either on Zoom, in person or outdoors. 
Thanks for everybody's flexibility in this. Okay. <clears throat> um, I just want to thank everybody uh, for all, all of you who have put um, grocery sacks in the bin over the last two years. Um, they have been used. And if the food uh, shelf, if we got a lot of them uh, and the food shelf was um, supplied and had plenty in reserve, then I took them to Ruby's Pantry. But recently, um, the last several months, there haven't been that many bags. And so what I'm going to do is remove the bin. And I just want to thank, again, everybody for doing it. It's not that the food shelf can't use those. They can't, still can. You just can have, if you could bring them on Monday from 3 to 5 and give them to a volunteer, then they'll be happy to take them and use them. Um, and, and again, or if you see me in church and you want to give them to me, that's fine, too. I'll take care of them. So thank everybody for doing that these last couple of years. Any other announcements? Um, thanks to everyone who signed up to be liturgists and thank you Chandler for being our musician again today. Uh, one more thing, does everybody know there's going to be a power outage on Wednesday the 8th? I think the utility has to do something with the system, and I don't know the details, but uh, it will be three o'clock in the afternoon for between two and five minutes. I realized that was going to be a problem because I'm in the middle of a webinar that afternoon. Um, but uh, just so everybody's aware. Let us have our sending music.
<laughs> and now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May love spread throughout this world. May reconciliation be our watchword. May we find peace that only God can give. Go in peace. Amen. Okay, it's on mute time. Yeah. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Hey, Morning, Tom Yahazi. How are you feeling? <clears throat> Thomas? I'm doing I'm doing better. I <laughs>